Japan's first modern water supply service started in Yokohama in 1887. Since then, maintaining the quality water supply system has been an important mission to keep the standards of public health in Japan. Japan's waterworks experienced various difficulties. Damages and leakages of facilities due to natural disasters such as earthquakes and the war. Massive blackouts due to heavy snowfall and severe droughts. Sudden increase of water demands coupled with water pollution during the rapid economic growth after the war. Many improvements were made in overcoming such crises. In 2017, Japan achieved 98% or almost universal water supply coverage supplying safe water from the tap 24 hours a day at an affordable tariff. What made such an achievement of waterworks possible? Many factors have contributed to the success. Government has set up regulations and supported funding. Municipal water utilities operators work together. Funding for upgrading facilities became available through bond issuing. Operation of waterworks business became self-sufficient using water tariffs. Human resources were developed to operate waterworks systems. Customer service was improved. Any one of these factors is also vital for improving water services and many other social infrastructures. Let's take a look at the history of Japan's waterworks with a focus on Yokohama. Japan's waterworks. Progress made since the implementation of Yokohama waterworks. The foundation of the modern waterworks from the mid 19th century. When the port of Yokohama opened in the mid 19th century, Japan needed to modernize herself to avoid being colonized by the West. The government designated five international ports in the country to promote communication and trading with the Western countries. These port cities experienced unwelcomed cholera outbreaks. The epidemiological survey conducted in Yokohama, one of the five ports, determined the cause of cholera outbreak to be the infected water from gutters and wells. Safe water supply was thus deemed necessary for combating infectious disease. The first modern waterworks built in Yokohama greatly contributed to fight against cholera outbreaks. The waterworks business back then was quite an expensive expenditure for the local government. The first modern Yokohama waterworks cost 1 million yen. The general account budget of Kanagawa Prefecture was half a million yen when the waterworks was completed in Yokohama. A year after its completion in 1888, the government decided to subsidize one-third of the waterworks construction project. This helped other cities in the country to start working on improving waterworks. The waterworks back then used cast iron pipes, something new to Japan. This was for the slow sand filtration and to convey treated water under pressure that are both necessary to avoid any contamination. Let's look at Yokohama Waterworks in detail. In 1854, the Japanese government signed the Treaty of Kanagawa, ending the self-imposed isolation policy that began in 1639. Five years later, on July 1st, 1859, the port of Yokohama was open to the world for the first time. Back then, Yokohama was a small fishing village consisting of about 100 households. The port of Yokohama flourished in silk trading, Japan's major export products, and would soon be known internationally. Trading in foreign settlements increased and technology poured in, resulting in a sudden growth in Yokohama's population. However, water in Yokohama had a high saline content since the city had expanded on reclaimed land, its groundwater was not suitable for drinking. In fact, there were only two wells suitable for providing portable drinking water. The majority of the residents had to buy water from water peddlers. As the city grew, the supply of drinking water became a serious issue. In those days, water cost as much as rice, but demand for water was great despite the high price. Among water peddlers were dishonest sellers who would sell dirty water from wells and rivers. This caused waterborne diseases to spread across the city. Also, fires would often spread as there wasn't enough water to put out fires. As the city grew, 
water shortage became a serious problem. In 1873, desperate for a solution, a local company set up by merchants laid wooden water pipes. The wooden pipes were made of planks or carved out from trees. The wooden pipes carried water from Tamagawa River into the wells in Yokohama, and this became drinking water for the people. However, there were many problems with wooden pipes. The planks would rot and water would leak. Dirty water seeped into the pipes which led to cholera outbreaks. Foreigners living in settlements and foreign consuls voiced their concerns and asked that the waterworks be improved. However, at the time Japan had no knowledge of the concept to create a new structure or vision of the scale necessary to set up modern waterworks using iron pipes. The only foreseeable solution was to hire foreign engineers to design and build waterworks. In 1883, further to the decision of the governor of Kanagawa prefectural government, Henry Spencer Palmer, an English engineer, arrived to carry out a survey and design the modern water supply system in Japan. In May 1885, construction began with the water intake from Sagami River. Neither the Kanagawa prefectural government nor local businesses could cover the huge construction cost. The only alternative would be to get a loan from the national government. After numerous negotiations with the Ministry of Home Affairs, the national government loan was approved and the first modern waterworks construction had finally begun. There were several reasons behind the government fully funding the city's waterworks construction. Yokohama was an important port city for Japan. Yokohama had to become a modern city for the government to successfully negotiate revisions to the many unfavorable trade treaties with the West. Being the first modern waterworks construction in Japan, Mr. Palmer brought Mr. J.H. Turner, who would serve as deputy engineer, and four others from England. The engineers were specialists in water intake pumping and plumbing, and they trained the Japanese engineers. Mr. Zentara Mita, the engineer from the Kanagawa prefectural government, worked with Mr. Palmer as the technical manager for the construction. He learned the latest technology in hopes of assisting the domestic industry to catch up. Mr. Mita was the first graduate of the civil engineering department in the Faculty of Science at the University of Tokyo. He started to work for the civil engineering section of the Kanagawa prefectural government in 1879. His contribution for Yokohama City ranged from working on water to sewage system projects. He designed Japan's first modern sewage system which was built in Yokohama from 1881 to 1887. Mr. Palmer praised Japanese engineers in the Japan Weekly Mail on August 15, 1886, a year before the completion of the water system. He listed the names of Tetsuo Tsuchida, an engineer responsible for the first section which was 43 kilometers long. Genjiro Yamasaki, an engineer responsible for the second section, and Hisachika Saito, an assistant engineer for the third section. He also complimented hard-working Japanese engineers, such as Zentaro Mita. Mr. J.H. Turner, the deputy engineer, also spoke highly of young Japanese engineers at the General Assembly of the Institute of Civil Engineers in 1890. Two-third of the construction cost was spent on material. This was because the pumps and the cast iron pipes were not available in Japan back then. Everything had to be imported. They searched nationwide for the suitable clay and filter sand. After overcoming difficult construction and many other obstacles, water started to flow on October 17, 1887. The Kanagawa prefectural government managed the operation of the waterworks. Originally, there were two options for the water source, Tamagawa River and Sagami River. After careful consideration, Sagami River was chosen. Tamagawa River flows through both Kanagawa and Tokyo, and it has been used as the water source for Tokyo since the Edo period. It has been used for irrigation as well. Using Tamagawa River, meant less construction cost, but it presented various other issues. They decided to use Sagami River even at higher costs, as it was the better choice from an administrative viewpoint. The decision proved worthwhile, as even after 133 years, the river continues to send clear and abundant natural water downstream using only gravity. 
It turns out that Mr. Palmer's research from 140 years ago proved suitable from a long-term perspective. In February 1890, two years after completion, Japan's first waterworks ordinance was announced. Regulations stated that waterworks must be operated by public funding from the local municipality. Based on this policy, Kanagawa Prefecture transferred the operation of the Yokohama Waterworks to Yokohama City, along with the facilities and operational rights, as well as the yearly installment reimbursement duty of the initial government loan for the construction. At the time, revenue from the Yokohama Water Supply Service was not enough to reimburse the principal and interest of the government loan of 1,092,000 yen. The water tariffs were too low to collect enough capital. While the waterworks operation was in a financially difficult situation, the water demand grew as the city's population increased. Within 10 years of the operation, an expansion project was necessary in 1898. Yokohama obtained the approval of the first expansion project from the government. The city also secured the government subsidy for one-third of the cost, 1,028,000 yen. This was used to repay the original loan of 1,092,000 yen. For the first time since 1890, the operation of waterworks was freed from the supervision of the Ministry of Finance. The funding of the first expansion project, costing 2 million yen in total, had to come from municipal bonds. 810,000 yen was sourced from the municipal external loan. Foreign capital was required because the domestic economy could not cover the fund. The revenue from the existing water tariffs were clearly not enough to cover the reimbursement of the municipal bond issued for the expansion project. Higher water tariffs were inevitable to repay the local debt. The first raise of the water tariffs happened prior to the expansion project. The raise differed depending on the type of water tap, but on average it was over 44%. Later, the volumic water tariff system was introduced based on metered volume of water usage, abolishing the system of all you can use with a fixed fee. The city's waterworks became a self-sustaining operation. System that supported modern waterworks. We've introduced the setup of the first modern waterworks in Yokohama. There have been many efforts by the government later to raise the penetration rate of waterworks nationwide. These are 1. Local municipality system announced in 1888 2. Government subsidy system started in 1888 3. Waterworks ordinance announced in 1890 4. Employing foreign engineers to import modern technology Five domestic application of imported technology. With the introduction of a local municipality system in 1888, Japan's cities, towns and villages became local governing bodies with extended authority. The local governments then were able to issue local bonds to support waterworks that required huge cost for initial constructions. There are two types of local bonds a local domestic loan which collects funds domestically and a local external loan which collects funds from abroad. From 1887 to 1914, the local bonds covered over 70% of funding of Japan's modern waterworks. Some research reveals 40% of those local bonds were local external loans. Local bonds, especially local external loans, played a vital role in providing financial resources for modern waterworks in Japan. The role of municipal bond still continues today. Water utilities operators require daily operational maintenance while paying capital and interest of local bonds. If the capital and interest of local bonds cannot be reimbursed, the operations of waterworks as well as water supply can be discontinued. Therefore, it is important to maintain water supply based on the revenue from the water tariffs. Some operators had struggled at the beginning of the modern waterworks in Japan, but now, almost all operators in cities are operating from the income of the water tariffs, while reimbursing the interest and capital of the local bonds. The government subsidy system started in 1888, 
help support municipal water utilities operators financially in case of difficulties due to the lack of capital. For Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, Yokohama, Hakodate, Niigata, Kobe and Nagasaki designated as important cities back then, one third of the waterworks cost was subsidized. Later, the subsidy ratio was reduced to one fourth. Other big cities and areas critical for industrial development and strategic military areas were given priority for subsidies. Waterworks Ordinance announced in February 1890 was the first law to administer water utilities operators. To set up waterworks, the approval from the Ministry of Home Affairs was required. It also clarified administrative policy on constructions. It declared that waterworks must be done by public funding of local government. This was why the administration and operation of Yokohama's modern waterworks was transferred to Yokohama City. In those days, there were no specialists on waterworks in Japan. The government invited William K. Burton from England in 1889 to supervise the survey and administration of waterworks requested by the local cities. Most materials for waterworks were imported, but some were sourced domestically. The domestic production of the main material, the cast iron pipe, started in 1887. By 1910, domestic production alone would be able to fulfill the demand. In 1914, the first standard specification of the cast iron pipe was enacted domestically. This was three years earlier than when the first standard specification was enacted in England, in 1917. As for pumps, domestic production started in 1912. For water meters, originally Siemens products from Germany were used, but domestic production would begin in 1913. Later, both pumps and meters were supplied domestically. Japan was in the process of economic development. The government made efforts to promote waterworks by improving legal and administrative system, securing financial resources and supporting technical aspects. Japan's waterworks business was on the path of becoming stable. Since Yokohama's first modern waterworks in 1887, in less than 30 years, there were 31 waterworks operations set up in the country by the end of 1914. The construction of Yokohama Waterworks and its improvement of public health made a huge impact on other cities. Great Kanto Earthquake, 1923 and National Penetration of Waterworks After the War, 1945. Thirty-six years had passed since the first modern waterworks was laid in Japan in 1887. Population had grown and revenue from water tariffs had increased. Then, in September 1923, the Great Kanto earthquake occurred that catastrophically destroyed waterworks facilities in the area. More than 20,000 citizens died in Yokohama. Many buildings were destroyed. Many water purification plants and other facilities were severely damaged. The government subsidized 85% of the restoration costs due to the urgency to recover waterworks facilities. Later, the government paid an additional 25% of the cost for reconstruction. During this restoration work, each household was equipped with a water meter. By 1927, all houses in Yokohama had water meters. This helped the waterworks operation to produce profits after paying a cumulative deficit. It took over 40 years, or 42 years to be exact, to come to this point. It took a long time since the beginning for the waterworks operation to become financially stable. However, Yokohama was completely destroyed by the bombing during the Second World War. Waterworks facilities were once again destroyed. In addition, there were no engineers left to fix them. The government was in no shape to support the restoration. Yokohama City had to issue local bonds to fund the reconstruction of waterworks facilities. Waterworks Act in 1957 paved the way for the local governments to address financial issues for their waterworks throughout the nation. 
Local bonds, a long-term debt, have been the main source of funding for their waterworks. The government allowed to issue local bonds based on the operation's financial conditions, income projections, project feasibility, and urgency. At the same time, the government purchased 80 to 90 percent of the municipal bonds by using public funds such as pension funds. Institute of Public Health of the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, the current National Institute of Public Health, trained people in fields such as public health engineering to help wider distribution of waterworks in Japan. These specialists took initiative at local governments during the initial phase of waterworks construction. Later, national universities have set up public health engineering departments where students learn waterworks operations based on curriculums of the Institute of Public Health. In 1955, Japan Water Works Association issued the water supply facility standards followed by the guidelines for water supply facility standards in 1958. These helped standardize designing and construction of waterworks facilities. The financial support from the government, training and development of specialists, and establishing technical standards. These factors contributed to the success in achieving universal water supply coverage in Japan after the war. Issues during the High Economic Development, 1954-1973 by the latter half of the 1950s, Japan had recovered from the war damage. Japan's economy started to develop rapidly. During this period, the economic development and urbanization created huge demand for water. A restrictive measure for water pumping was put in place. The use of surface water as a water source was encouraged. The construction of dams played a big role in this period. The Allied forces in Yokohama released buildings they had occupied after the war in the city center and port facilities. This encouraged building Yokohama as an international port city and developing industries. The city population grew by 40,000 annually. Land subsidence began due to an excessive use of groundwater in the industrial areas near the shore. In the 60s, the city built industrial waterworks to resolve these issues. In the suburbs, more housing complexes were built. The living standard of the people improved with washing machines, in-house baths, and flush toilets. All of these factors increased water demand. For this reason, Shurayama Dam would be built as a multi-purpose dam. It was built by water utilities operators in Yokohama City, Kawasaki City, Yokosuka City, and Kanagawa Prefecture. Yokohama used this dam as a new water source and built the Kosazume purification plant with rapid filtration system. Yokohama City was at the limit of expansion for operating water conveyance facilities and water purification plants due to rapid increase of population and water supply districts. The city could not properly plan the installation of pipes and pumping facilities, but only temporary fixes. The distribution networks were not in order. No one knew which water reservoir provides how much water to where, nor which pipes were connected to which pipes. The knowledge and information of the waterworks system were not properly handled and the pipes were getting old. To solve all these issues, a new water distribution block system was introduced. The areas with a water reservoir became one large block. Water flow of blocks in higher areas were managed by pumps. Water flow of blocks in lower areas were managed by a gravity system. A detour distribution route was set up in case of problems between blocks. The water supply pressure was set within an appropriate range, taking location, height and population into consideration to supply water. Small blocks were designed to manage water supply for a fixed population. Yokohama City introduced the block distribution system in Japan for the first time. The system prevented large-scale water supply failure in 1986 when the high voltage lines fell due to heavy snow. It helped speedy recovery of water supply. Japan suffers from a number of natural disasters, such as earthquakes. 
The city has been investing to build resilient infrastructure by standardizing system designs such as block distribution system and conducting quality control of materials. The aim is to build infrastructures to withstand disasters, not to fix it only after they're damaged. Upgrading of aging facilities, 2010 onwards. 横浜 city has carried out eight projects to expand water supply in the last 100 years to manage the growth of the city. The city has finally reached 100% water supply coverage in the 80s. Yokohama City currently supplies water to 3.72 million people. This is the largest city-run waterworks in Japan. This chart shows how the water supply grew in the last 130 years. The black line shows the maximum amount of water supply. The yellow, red and green lines show various water supply capacities. The water supply peaked in 1992 at 1.33 million cubic meters per day. Since then, it has been declining despite the growing population. This is probably because people started to pay attention to save water with the use of water-saving tools. Yokohama Waterworks System is now in a maintenance phase rather than an expansion. The biggest issue in this phase is the replacement of old water pipes. Pipes laid before the 50s were mostly replaced. Replacing 2,400 kilometers of pipes laid in the latter half of the 60s is in progress. Every year, the city has been replacing 110 kilometers of old pipes with earthquake-resistant pipes, prioritizing importance of supply routes and construction environment while spreading the workload equally. Another issue is to manage the business while dealing with decreasing revenue and water demand. Important strategies include a long-term plan for facility replacements and finance along with accurate budgeting and accounting. For the waterworks operation to be self-sufficient, long-term municipal bonds must be the main source of funds for facility upgrades. It is important, however, to be profitable from the user fee as the bonds are nothing but debts for the following years. Lastly, we've introduced the history of Japan's waterworks of the last 133 years through Yokohama Waterworks. Yokohama City has expanded the waterworks network by eight times, despite the obstacles in budgeting and technology, in order to support expanding city areas and population. It was necessary to support the development of the city, which was a gateway port for Japan's economic development. Yokohama City also accumulated knowledge from experiencing dealing with earthquakes, war damage, land subsidence, blackouts and droughts. The city has been the front-runner in various fields. It implemented the first modern waterworks technology from England. The city introduced the Block Distribution System and Private Finance Initiative PFI, for the first time in Japan. Yokohama City has always been a leader of waterworks for Japanese cities. The most notable of all in quickly implementing a leading technology using PFI is the ceramic water filter for water purifying technology in the Kauai Water Purification Plant. This was the first incident of PFI for water purification plants in Japan. It was funded and built by a private company which carries on operating the plant. The property rights were transferred to Yokohama Waterworks Bureau for the purpose of receiving tax benefits. PFI is one of the methods of public-private partnership, PPP. PPP is critical in meeting sustainable development goals, SDGs, in funding and improving water supply services, but taking advantage of this complex method has not been easy. It is because PPP requires skills in planning, procurement, and administering various contracts. There are also political risks involved in raising water tariffs. To successfully use PPP for waterworks projects, there are five important areas to consider carefully. These are safety, equitability, affordability, sustainability, and transparency. These are crucial points for the waterworks business as part of the public welfare to improve public health. 
social infrastructures such as waterworks are critical for improving social welfare and development of a country. The population has been declining and the economy has slowed down in Japan. The current issue is the huge maintenance cost of facilities built when Japan's economy was developing rapidly. For a young country expecting growth, it is necessary to invest in social infrastructures. But it is also important to have a long-term view for when a society matures. Waterworks business receives revenue in exchange of service, supplying water. Borrowing now to build facilities is a useful strategy to anticipate revenue growth from an increasing population and economic development. To do so, it is imperative to have adequate planning and correct measurement of water usage for collecting appropriate tariffs. Facility maintenance is equally important so that we don't lose revenue from water leakages after building a costly system. Our users will understand to pay water tariffs for safe and healthy water always available from the tap. An employee of Yokohama Waterworks Bureau says from his experience. When local governments revise water tariffs, they only do so after consulting external experts and residents. Social infrastructure is the backbone for national development. Its quality and resilience must be maintained. Waterworks is a public operation in Japan, but it's private in some other countries. No matter who operates the waterworks, it is vital to continue the service from construction to maintenance without failure. 133 years of Yokohama Waterworks proves just how important that is.